Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Ultima 6, The False Prophet. In our last episode, we wasted a little bit of time fully equipping our party uh, and buying every single spell in the game. But now it's time for some action. It's time to go into those dungeons. And we're going to start off with the dungeon wrong. Now, the best way to get there uh, from where we are is to travel to the town of Yu. Wrong um, is, of course, the anti-virtue standing in opposition to the virtue of justice. And that is the uh, justice, uh, the home virtue, I should say. Justice is the virtue of the town of you. So let's travel to you using our Orb of the Moons by placing it two spaces to the east of the Avatar. Once again, uh, we had a slight problem in our last game, uh, in our last episode, where the Avatar didn't have enough encumbrance to carry his own spellbook. From now on, we're going to go ahead and have Dupre, I meant to say Shaman, I'm sorry, carry our bag with the Orb of the Moons, all of the Runes of Virtue, and the Moonstones, as well as our, the deed for our ship. That will allow the Avatar to carry his spellbook. That way everybody's fully equipped, everybody's got swamp boots, armor, and a helm. The Avatar has a weapon and a spellbook, and we're ready for some dungeon crawling. Now one thing I'd like to do is I'd like to hand this um, map bag back to the Avatar, as well as... That's actually fine. Alright. So, to go ahead and get to the uh, dungeon wrong. We have to head eastward out of the town of Yu. Much like we did in our last episode, we're heading east, um, and that's what we ended up doing in order to get to the uh, to Nicodemus's house. Um, I do, would not like to do this journey at nighttime, so we're going to quickly rest and sleep through the night. Nobody has any food, so nobody is uh, healing, but nobody really requires any healing except for the Avatar at this point. Let's sleep for another four hours, and that should get us close enough to daytime. There we go, the sun has risen and we are ready to continue. So heading eastward uh, um, out of the town of Yu, the road's going to go ahead and curve up here a little bit. And once again, as I always say, if you uh, have a copy of the Ultima 6 map or want to look it up on Google, um, the path uh, heads upwards um, out of the town and hits a fork. If you continue along that fork to the north, we're eventually going to get to the Shrine of Justice, but we're not ready for that. We don't want to fight more gargoyles. Uh, the whole point of this is to get stronger. We're going into these dungeons to level up and, and also to find these map pieces. Eventually, the road is going to uh, end at a um, body of water. And here it is. There's some skiffs here. Now, those of you who um, have a Ultima manual will remember that uh, most uh, writing in Britannia is done using runic letters. The sign here says, the first word is the, the second word is long, and the third word is Hall, the long hall. <laughs> and we have some uh, skiffs allowing us to cross this body of water. It's not a particularly wide body, it's just a little bit of a bay that cuts into, uh, into the uh, continent. Now for future reference, um, 
gives away 75 stone, uh, sorry, 25 stones. Before we go into this dungeon, um... It makes sense to, uh, own a skiff. Because some dungeons have bodies of water inside them. Um... So it makes sense to have one. Unfortunately, that does count as stealing, but it's worth, um that little hidden karma that we're going to take, because we're going to need that skiff going forward. So if we head to the east here... Honestly, we could have just gone ahead and purchased a skiff, um, seeing as how much money we have, but uh, I didn't feel like going all the way back to town. Now that we've reached the end of the path, the path continues uh, southwards here. Um, we move to the east here, we follow this line of mountains to the north. Here where there's a little bit of a pass, we go to the east until the mountains end. We follow them around to the south. And we find a formidable dungeon entrance. Let's go ahead and go inside. Shamino says, this is the dungeon wrong. Fiona's gonna go ahead and quickly light a torch for us so we can see what we're doing. Now, as I mentioned previously, there are eight primary dungeons, each one exemplifying one of the anti-virtues that stand in opposition to the eight great virtues of the Avatar. Wrong is the opposite of justice. Now, in Ultima IV, there were eight unique dungeons. Uh, each dungeon was its own thing, and the Avatar had to go into all eight of them. In this game, the Avatar doesn't have to go into every dungeon, and some of the dungeons have merged. The dungeon Wrong and the dungeon Covetous, Covetous is the dungeon for Minoc, uh, the virtue of sacrifice, um, are actually one dungeon. They are actually joined. Uh, there's two different entrances, but they both lead to the same dungeon complex. So by going into Wrong today, we're actually... Uh, um, going into two dungeons, both wrong and covetous. Now right here in front of us, there's a cauldron. Weighs 16 stones. Now certainly we wouldn't really have any reason to carry a uh, cauldron around with us. At least it wouldn't seem like that. And unfortunately right now, our um, party doesn't have the encumbrance to really take this with us. Maybe if we move some things around creatively, we could do that. But, um... Just remember that this is here. It's right by the entrance to, to uh, Wrong. And it's very easy to get to. Wrong is not really that far out of our way. So when, if we need a cauldron later in the game, it's here for us. Let me give you a little spoiler. We will need it later. It's an important quest item. <laughs> we'll come back for that later. Alright, here we are in the dungeon Wrong. Now, there's lots of doors here, and all of them seem to be locked magically. Fortunately, the Avatar has a spell to deal with that. Let's see what we can find. Now, the unlock, unlock magic spell is a second circle spell. Ah, there's switches. There's a ladder leading downwards. Let's take a look and see where that goes. Hmm. Oh, there's a guard.
and allow our party to uh, do the fighting instead of the avatar. Somehow, uh, Dupre was set to command. I don't want that. I want him to go into assault mode. Looks like the guard has fled. And now he's been killed. There's a crossbow, some more bolts, another halberd, curved heater, and some coins. We'll go ahead and leave the coins behind. We honestly don't need another halberd right now. It would have been nice to know about that pre um, earlier, though. But we'll grab those cross bubbles for YOLO. There's lots of switches there on the floor, and I'm not sure what they do. We'll have to figure this out. Ah, we're being attacked again. There's a daemon. And unfortunately, we can't get to the daemon because he's behind a... Uh, He's behind a, um, portcullis. I'm gonna leave the party here while I explore uh, with the avatar for a moment. Now there's a ladder leading downwards. In there. That would no doubt take us uh, further along on our quest to find this map piece. Perhaps some of these switches will allow us to uh, open that door. Ah, but that guard is back. This looks like a job for uh, an avatar. Opening up these portcullises. Hopefully, this isn't going to cause us problems. While we're here, some of our party have has uh, lost some hit points. So let's see what we have in terms of healing spells. After all, we've just bought a whole bunch of spells here. Now the avatar can cast uh, up to fifth level spells right now. But we do have a spell called Great Heal on the fourth level. Oh, I'm sorry. Great heal only heals one person greatly. <laughs> Let's go ahead and heal Leodon. Hmm. Wasn't all that uh, impressed by that. Let's see if there's a mass heal spell, but I don't see one. I didn't mean to cast that on Shamino, sorry. I meant to cast that on Leona. And then let's also cast on uh, Santre. The problem was I forgot that uh, their hit points don't actually go up that high. So what looked like very low hit points was just the fact that um, 
their hit points aren't that high to begin with. So now that we have um, hit points, now that we have a party that can actually get up in per close and personal with uh, halberds against this thing, let's take out this daemon. Now daemons are very strong, don't get me wrong. Um, but there's just one of them. And we have righteousness on our side. This could be a terrible idea. I could be getting us into a heck of a lot of trouble here. I'm gonna bring the party uh, into the room more fully here. Unfortunately, Leodon is blocking the way here. Let's switch that person to command here. Oh, Leodin's been charmed. <laughs> Leodin will now begin to attack the rest of the party. That's one of the spells that uh, demons have. I'm going to go ahead and stop the combat for a moment while I uh, do some creative casting here. We'll go ahead and use Great Heal. on Leodon. I want the whole party to get into the room to surround this daemon. There we go. Now, to arms! One of the things you have to be especially careful of in these combats is the fact that, well, there are doorways and that can be an issue. But with everybody working together, the daemon is now critical. Unfortunately, Leodon is still charmed, and I think that means that our party is still attacking her. So let's break off combat, and hopefully Leodon will uh, come back to Leodon's, will come back to her senses. Unfortunately, that didn't open up that door. It opened up a lot of other doors, and there's a Drake. This is about the point of the game where the Avatar realizes he may have made a terrible mistake. The party flees for their lives. So I threw all the switches and it opened up all of these gates, but it didn't open up the one gate that we needed it to open. Nor did it, oh, there's a mage. Everybody to arms and take this guy out. Ah, oh, Leodon continues to... Leodon was killed before I could um, stop my party from, well, killing her. <laughs> What I realized was, let's quickly just kill this mage here. What I was trying to say was, um, what I should have done, realizing that Leodon was charmed, and so because of that, is on the enemy's side temporarily, meaning my own party's gonna be stupid enough to continue to attack her. What I should have done was, I should have cast the spell magic on her and cured her, <laughs> and I didn't even think of that. We'll deal with, um, oh, and then right now the avatar is um, unfortunately poisoned. We'll cast the spell magic on myself. All right, we'll deal with Leodon in a moment. But first, let's continue with what we were about to do. Now, our problem was that gate all the way to the west um, is still closed with a stairway leading downwards. This gate, well, this gate's still closed, but seems to have the switch that may open that. It's the only switch we haven't hit yet. Now, if we had some sort of spell that would allow us to... Um, Throw that switch without even uh, being able to get in there. If only the Avatar had something, you know, that could affect things far away. Like, oh, 
telekinesis. And the switch has been thrown. So what we're going to have to do here... Um, we need to search Leoden's body really quickly. And the Avatar is going to go ahead and drop the uh, gold that he's carrying. In fact, we're going to do that for everybody here. This is actually a good example of uh, what can happen when a character dies, and we haven't really gotten into that <laughs> in this playthrough. What happens is, the character, well, if we want to get that person resurrected, we need to take them with us. And the problem with that is, dead bodies with all of their equipment are heavy. And that means some creative use of um, moving your stuff around. At this point in the game, I'm not particularly uh, concerned with all of this gold that we're losing. And Shaman will carry the body, Dupre will carry all of Leodon's goods. All we need to do is take her to a place where we can resurrect her, and well, we'll be back to good as new. Now before we uh, go any farther here, this is where the mage was was living. That's the problem with opening all those gates. We allowed all of these creatures to come forth. Let's close all these gates, and I'm going to bring everybody in here, and we're going to kill this... Uh... this guard. Now there are some ways around that problem um, of having your party do things you don't want them to do in combat. Um, I showed in a previous episode how you can change around um, the way your characters react. Right now I have them all set to assault, which is pretty much means they're just going to go ahead and attack the nearest enemy, unlike something like, say, Berserk, where they're going to go for the strongest enemy or a retreat. But they all have command, which would mean that every single turn I have to direct every single character to do what whatever they're going to do. That gets very tedious very quickly, but what I should have done was, as soon as my character, one of my characters is charmed, I should have set them all to command um, to keep them from attacking my own character. That's my own fault there. Or I should have, you know, stopped combat, not restarted combat until after I had dealt with the charm issue. The issue of my character being charmed. Lessons learned? Uh, that's why we're here. We're here to learn more about how to play this game. Ah! Using telekinesis on that switch worked. It's now open and we can delve further down onto the third level. Alright, looks like we're in some sort of big open chamber here. There's another ladder leading even for- oh, leading back upwards to another portion of the dungeon above. Oh, unfortunately the torch is burned out. Leona, go ahead and use another torch. Well, that's interesting. There's a Hydra guarding the way. It allows me to attack the Hydra even through the door, because it's sticking its tentacles out, I suppose. Go ahead and re-equip our spellbook, and we're going to cast uh, Unlock Magic. As you can see, these dungeons uh, are always full of enemies um, and traps and puzzles and such. Like that, they often have hidden passages if you look at the wall. Oh, another rat. And a door. And it looks like we've been successful. I'm gonna go ahead and leave most of the party outside here for just a moment. There's some gold. We don't really need gold. Leona can get uh, a torch for us. She's done very well carrying our torches. Yolo can get another lockpick. 
and a gem. But what's most interesting here is part of a map. Let's move that into our bag. We now have the fourth map piece. And inside this chest, there's another torch and five more gold coins. Go ahead and take that last uh, up. Unfortunately, that's too heavy for Leona. Okay, Dupre, who's been holding the rest of our torches, will go ahead and grab that. Now, there's also a magic bow. Bows are a pretty useful um, ranged weapon. Um, especially a magic bow. You know, they're, they're, they're one of the best ranged weapons there, there is. Um, we don't have anybody yet who really uses bows, um, but they're a good weapon for somebody who has a lot of dexterity. I think we're going to go ahead, it, it'll be a good idea to take that with us if we can carry it. And we'll hold on until our characters have a higher dexterity, then we'll go ahead and start buying arrows and have a, have a bowcaster, uh, you know, have a, have a uh, archer rather, bowcaster, <laughs> have an archer in addition to uh, Yolo um, being using his crossbow. Well, we've done it. We've completed the next part of our quest. We've gotten the fourth piece of the map, and we've successfully navigated a dungeon. Well, for certain values of, of the word uh, successful, we did lose a character. And we're going to have to get her resurrected. Oop, a bat. Let's not have the party uh, follow. Let's have everybody rejoin here. There we go. Well, there's another door here. And this leads further down into the fourth level of the dungeon. Let's take a look. Ah, there's a ghost. And as you can see, our party doesn't do too badly as, as long as we're not... Uh, all locked, lodged up in a doorway where we can't actually get at the uh, at the enemy, which is what happened in the case of that demon. So that ends up being a pretty useful lesson. Um, in a game like this, and if there's an enemy there, it's better to walk, get out and let the enemy come to you so that everybody can get around and, and actually get at the enemy than to stand here and have one person block the doorway. All right, well, oh my. Thou dost see a silver serpent. Let's see what we can do. Silver serpents are legendary creatures. Mythical, uh, even, in terms of the world of Britannia. And, well, we defeated it. Again, our party's not in, not really that weak when it comes to what we're trying to um, do here. Our big issue became one of letting the party, party get bottlenecked in a doorway. seems the combined might of my party, you know, if they're all allowed to, you know, get their hits in, <laughs> are more than enough to um, accomplish what we're trying to accomplish here. I'm allowing the party to uh, attack these bats, even though they're not much of a threat. Because every little bit helps, every little bit of extra, ooh, of extra um, experience helps. Because apparently there's villagers after us. Carrying cloth armor. I'm not sure what these guys were doing down here, but, well, they attacked us first, so... Ah. <sighs> 
And once again... <laughs> thou dost see a child. There's a room full of children. A room full of hostile children who will kill us. We must murder the room full of children. This is a um, recurring uh, gag um, in the Ultima series. Um, from even earlier, when, when from Ultima 4 and such, uh, when we were dealing with issues of, of virtue and what is virtuous. Um, nobody, nobody would believe that killing a child is a virtuous action, but what if the child is trying to murder you? <laughs> It's a bit of a ridiculous uh, dilemma that they're they're putting in front of us, but it's kind of a running uh, theme in the Ultimate Game. That there's always uh, groups of children who will try to kill you, and you must defend yourself and kill them. All right, we're back up on the uh, the first level here. You know, having dropped off all that money, let's see if uh, anybody could, could pick up that cauldron now. It weighs 16 stones. I don't think anybody has quite enough. Actually, YOLO can take it. That saves us a trip down here later. Now, if you remember uh, earlier on, there's that's where we started off. Um, earlier on in the dungeon, one of the first rooms we went and visited um, had a bunch of switches. Well, those switches control some of these portcullises on this level. Not this one, obviously. Okay. We'll continue to look around here. Perhaps these ones. Nope, the Percolus is still there. Ah, it's now open. Now I saw a Wyvern, so let's run in- oh, there's two of them. Take a look at the FR's hit points. Let's flee. Allow the wyverns to come to us if they want to. Go ahead and use our uh, healing spell on the people who need it. Okay, so let's try. The avatar has a halberd and should be able to attack through this doorway. In some way, this is uh, perhaps cheating that I'm attacking it around the corner and it can't do the same. Unfortunately, there is a electric field that we can't get through. 
Electric fields are not like other fields. Where you can simply cast, uh... Sorry, I'm actually having a hard time find <laughs> finding the spell. I'm trying to remember where it was to spell field. There it is. You can't simply cast a spell field on an electric field. It's not like a normal uh, field. It's actually there by... Um, oh, what's the word for it? Um, it was created by either a switch or some other um, means. Uh, you'd have to find the right switch to throw to turn off the electric field. It's not a um, normal... It's not like a poison field or a... Uh, protection field or anything like that, or a fire field or a sleep field. But that's pretty much it for the dungeon uh, wrong. We've got what we came for. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and head out of here now. So like I said, that was fairly successful, but we were left with a little bit of a problem. We have a dead party member. Now, Shamino is holding on to our Orb of the Moons. Um, and I remember that there was a healer who would resurrect people if you go to the town of Scarabray. which is located two steps to the south and two steps to the west of the Avatar. In fact, there it is. There's the healer's house. The healer who happens to be asleep. I see that Shamino carries a departed friend. Resurrection costs 400 gold. Interested? Ah, uh, well, yes we are. Your party takes up a collection for their fallen comrade. In other words, the Avatar wasn't carrying enough, so we get it from everybody else. Dizana lays hands upon the corpse. Doman, Fixus, Arentu, and the dead live again. Return when you need healing. And we have Laodon back. Back at the end of the party and with one hit point. So the Avatar is going to go ahead and use uh, Great Heal. And now Laodon has maxed out hit points again. So Dupre is going to have to go in and uh, hand over all the items back to Laodon. There we go. Now, I don't think Laodon was carrying anything else uh, at this point. So knowing uh, for the future, uh, Laodon has uh, quite a bit of encumbrance, so we can hand items to Laodon if we need to. And our party is back to full strength. Uh, we've successfully navigated one of the Dungeons of Britannia. In terms of our experience points, uh, let's look and see where we are. The Avatar is still short of uh, level 6. Prey still needs a little bit more to get to level 5. However, Shamino now has enough. Yolo is still short. Leona is about 100 short, as is Leodon. But Santre has now gotten enough. So we now have two characters with enough, um, enough experience points to uh, level up. Let's quickly do that. Once again, Shamino has the Orb of the Moons. First thing we're going to do is, remember, we wanted to gain strength for our characters. So we're going to send... Um, actually, let's take a look at Shamino's stats. Yeah, at this point, we, he could use more strength. So, we're going to have to go to the Shrine of Valor.
which is located two spaces to the east and one to the north. And remember, the mantra of valor is Ra. Shamano is going to meditate and speak the mantra of valor. Shamano has gained a level and strength. There is not else for you to learn here and now. Return when thy journey has progressed farther. And um, Santre, sorry, Santre, let's go to Santre has quite a bit of strength, but could uh, bear to do with some more dexterity, meaning we want to go to the Shrine of Compassion. The Shrine of Compassion, I need to move up here a little bit, is two spaces to the north and one over to the east. And the, sh and the mantra of Compassion is Mu. So Santre is going to meditate, speak the mantra. Santre has gained a level and dexterity. So now if we look at uh, Shamino, Shamino's strength is now uh, looking pretty good. And as for Santre, yes, his dexterity is now up over 20. So we've made some progress. Two characters have leveled up. We've gotten another piece of the map and we've got a, and we're ready for further adventures. We have a full spell book, more rages than we know what to do with, and um, some ham. <laughs> We're ready for some more fights. In our next episode, we're continuing our dungeon diving. I'll see you then. <laughs>